तस्यांग वै श्रीयमाणायां कृष्णी परमपुरुषे भक्तिपद्यति पुंस शोकमोहो भुयापहा निगम कल्पतर गलित फल सुखमुखाद मृतद्रवसंयुत पीबत भागवत रसमाड़य मुहुरहो रसिका भुभावुका अनर्थोपम साक्षा भक्तिजोग अधुख्यजे लोक से दान तो विद्वश्चक्री सात संहिता जश्यांग वै श्रीयमाणा कृष्ण परम पुषे भक्तिपद्यति पुंस शोक मोह भयापहा श्रीमद्भागवत पुराणमलम वैष्णवा प्रिय श्रीमद्भागवत द लास्ट कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ श्रील प्रभुपाद श्रील व्यासदेव वॉज कंपाइल्ड ऑल द वेदिक लिटरेचर चारिवेद उपनिषदे जत कि तार अर्थ लिया व्यास कर संचय एज इट इज द लास्ट कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ श्रील व्यासदेव सो व्यासदेव has put here all the essence of all the vedic literatures for in four vedas in all upanishads whatever you'll find you'll find everything here in this uh, shrimad bhagavatam krishna tulya bhagavata vibhushar basroy prati shloki prati akshare nana artha ko hai The Srimad Bhagavatam is not different from Krishna. It's Krishna Tulya. It's as good as Krishna. As Krishna is Vibhu, the Supreme Lord, and Sarvasraya, and also takes shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. Similarly, the Srimad Bhagavatam is also Vibhu, and also Sarvasraya, also takes shelter. एट श्रीमद भागवत महोत्सव बिगाज इज नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कृष्ण दिस इज बाणी अवतार ऑफ कृष्ण बाणी अवतार मीन्स द कृष्ण वर्ड्स मैसेज हैज एज्यूम्ड ए फॉर्म दिस इज श्रीमद भागवत दिस इज नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कृष्ण वन शुड अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग and worship shrimad bhagavatam also and shrimad bhagavatam is such a scripture grantha you will never find in any other countries in any other language you will never find shri shrimad bhakti siddhanta saraswati go swami prabhupad ji maharaj has said if all the books and the library of the world will be destroyed there will be no loss in it no harm to it only if shrimad bhagavatam is there this is such a scripture vedic scripture the shrimad bhagavatam if someone cannot do anything any sadhana anything only hear shrimad bhagavatam only hears smal bhagavatam and he will get the highest perfection of life highest perfection of life but one should be very very careful to listen to it to hear to it and from whom one should hear this is most important thing to understand jao bhagavat padho वैष्णव स्थानी एकांत तो आश्रय करो चैतन्य चरणी भागवत तो जेना माने से जवन सम तार शास्ता आछे जन्मे जन्मे प्रभु जम दिस हेज बीन सेड इन श्री चैतन्य भागवत इफ यू वांट टू लिसन टू श्रीमद भागवत You must approach a Bhagavata. That means Bhakta Bhagavata, a very dear devotee of Krishna. 
इतनो ना भक्त भागवत दुस्थाने भागवत नाम सुना जाए एक भक्त भागवत आर एक ग्रंथ भागवत यू हियर द नेम ऑफ भागवत इन टू प्लेसेस डू नो यस भक्त भागवत एंड ग्रंथ भागवत इस ग्रंथ भागवत एंड भक्त भागवत भक्त डिबोटी हु नोज भागवत डूस्टैंड हु नोज भागवत तत्व He is also known as Bhagavat, because he is an embodiment of Bhagavat. By his own action, his behavior, all activity, he teaches Bhagavat. He is an acharya of Bhagavat. Do you understand? Acharya, Achinoti Sastrarthun Jao, Sangasrati. आचार्य स्थापित स्वयं आचार्य आचार्य तेनो कीर्ति हुईजन आचार्य हुईजन आचार्य आचिनोति शास्त्रार्थ हो आचार्य आचार्य स्थापित स्वयं आचार्य आचार्य तेनो कीर्ति नास्त्र तत्व इज वेरी वेरी कन्वर्स शास्त्र तत्व Not only theoretically, not only theoretically, practically, Sangha Acharya, Acharya Sthapya, he himself observes in his own activities, his daily activities, his own behavior. He observes the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam in his daily life, and also those who come to him, those who. Take shelter at his lotus feet. The hearers, the shravankari, the sishyas, the disciples. He makes them that acharya makes them observe this thing in their own lives. He is known as acharya, bona fide acharya. You understand? So you must approach such an acharya to. रेड दिस श्रीमद भागवतम जा भागवत पढ़ो वैष्णव स्थानी एकांत आश्रय करो चैतन्य चरण एंड टेक्स एल्टर सोले द लोटस पट श्रीमद चैतन्य महाप्रभु देन विल हैव इट्स इज मर्सी कजलेस मर्सी देन विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट इज एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट बिकॉज Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedic literature. Bhagavat jena mani se jovun sama tar sastha chhe jan me jan me prabhu jama. If someone will not accept Srimad Bhagavatam, he is a mlecha, he is a jovan. He must be punished life after life by jamraj. You understand? This is most important thing. So all should accept Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm-hmm. Only by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Only by hearing. Sthane sthita sruti gatam tanubang manubir. Jo prayasa ajita jita apyasthi sthai sri lokyang. This Srimad Bhagavatam says. This statement given by Lord Brahma. In whatever position... One may be. Let him be there in that position. If someone is brahmachari, let him be in that position as brahmachari. If someone is grastha, let him be in that position as grastha. If someone is banprasthi, let him be in that position of banprasthi. If someone is sannyasi, let him be there in that position of sannyasi. No need. Of changing position, no need at all. Only one thing is needed. Sthane sthita sruti gatam tanu bang mano bhi. Jo prayo swaji to ji to pesita istri lokyam. Only here, Sri Madhav Bhagavatam. Only here, from the one I have heard. Acharya, Delhi, 
nityo bhagavata sevayam is not only once done once a weekly done no no daily daily business as you have daily routine eating sleeping tiring like that working ha huh? similarly this is daily activity nityam bhagavata sevaya every day one should serve shrimad bhagavata listen shrimad bhagavata every day nityam bhagavata sevaya this is most important thing and bhagavata this if you someone only listens only listens in whatever position he is he will achieve such a perfection there is such a perfection in this bhakti yoga that he will be able to conquer who is unconquerable in three words that supreme lord Supreme Lord is unconquerable. Ajita, in three words, three lokya, and that devotee will be able to conquer the un- unconquerable. Such perfection is achieved only by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So let me begin. This is last just an introduction I gave. and many things are there so shrimad bhagavatam is eighth canto chapter 7 text 22 tumi ko tumi ko sarva jagato sarva jagata ishwaro ishwaro bandha bandha mukhyo कुशला प्रपन्नाति हर गुरु तेकसर्वगत ईश्वरबंध मुख्य तं तं अर्चंती कुशला प्रपनार्ति हरं गुरु तुम्ही क सर्व जगत ईश्वर बंध मुख्य तं तं अर्चंती कुशला प्रपनार्ति हरं गुरु ट्रान्सलेशन बाय श्रील प्रभुपाद ओ लॉर्ड यू आर द कॉज ऑफ बंडेज एंड लिबरेशन ऑफ द एंटायर यूनिवर्स बिकॉज यू आर इट्स रूलर those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness surrender unto you and therefore you are the cause of mitigating their distresses and you are also the cause of their liberation we therefore worship your lordship let me repeat translation o oh lord Oh, you are the cause of bondage and liberation. You are the cause of bondage and liberation of the entire universe. Of the entire universe. Because you are its ruler. Because you are its ruler. Those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness. Those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness. Surrender unto you. Surrender unto you. And therefore you are the cause. Therefore, you are the cause of mitigating their distresses. Of mitigating their distresses. And you are also the cause of their liberation. And you are also the cause of their liberation. We therefore worship your lordship. We therefore worship your lordship. Purport by Sri Lopraupad. Actually, Lord Vishnu maintains and accomplishes all good fortune. If one has to take shelter of Lord Vishnu. Why should the demigods take shelter of Lord Shiva? They did so because Lord Vishnu acts through Lord Shiva in the creation of material world. Lord Shiva acts on behalf of Lord Vishnu. When the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, fourteen chapter, that He is the Father of all living entities, Am Bija Pradapita, this refers to actions performed by Lord Vishnu through Lord Shiva. Lord Vishnu is always 
are not tasked to material activities. And when material activities are to be performed, Lord Vishnu performs them through Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is therefore received on the level of Lord Vishnu. When Lord Vishnu is untouched by the external energy, he is Lord Vishnu. But when he is in touch with the external energy, he appears in his feature as Lord Shiva. This is Srimad Bhagavatam, 8th Canto, Chapter 7, Text 22. In this chapter, the Lord Shiva sets the universe. This has been said. So, these are this Prajapati's prayer offers prayers to Lord Shiva. Hmm. This is uh, the topic when Lord Shiva drinks the poison all ocean ocean of poison so destructive poison mm. thereby Lord Shiva saves the universe when the both demigods and the demons both of them were churning that ocean milk ocean mm. so many good things came out mm. all Demigods, all of them, they took all these things. At last when this uh, poison came up, because Basuki snake was the rope, oh, here that Basuki snake vomited poison, such poison, very, very vast ocean-like poison came up. But all were afraid to take up poison. Who will take poison? Will you take poison? <laughs> All are very anxious to take up nectar. <laughs> nectar will come up and will take. And who will take poison? It's very destructive. All are afraid. Nobody was prepared to take it up. And if that poison would be there, the whole universe would have been destroyed. Such a condition, you see. But Lord Shiva came up. All right. If nobody wants to take up poison, give it to me. Give it to me. You see, Lord Shiva is such a personality. Lord Shiva is such a personality. He accepts all the rejected stuff. All lies. Nobody accepts. All will reject. No, 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 no. But Lord Shiva says, hey, all right, get it. Give it to me. <laughs> it's such a personality, Lord Shiva. Do you understand? His asutosa, very silly, and within a very short time, he is pleased. He is very much pleased. Yesterday in the evening, I was telling you that story how that Brahmin in Kasi worshipped Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva was pleased within a very short time. You just offer a bell leaf and little Ganges water. Om Namah Shivaya. Yes, then Lord Shiva will appear. What do you want? He'll immediately give a benediction. Is Ashutosh. Is uh, placed in a very short time. You can't understand. Do you understand? Huh? Is new bhakta? Yeah. It's sort of here attentively. Do you understand? Yeah. Bhagavatam Krishna Katha is non different from Krishna. It's Krishna himself. One should pay attention, concentrated attention. Yes. This is nectar. But Lord Shiva is saving you, is taking poison and giving you nectar. He's not giving poison to you. He takes himself poison. And you are all anxious to have the nectar. Isn't it? Have you tasted nectar? Oh, unfortunate fellow. You have not tasted nectar. Such an unfortunate fellow. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
is the nectar is 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 here is all is given to you but you can't have it and test it do you know how to test this nectar you don't know you see you know how to test a food how do you test it by what sense you taste test it ha huh? by tongue but this nectar cannot be tested by tongue you should mind it you should know it you know how to test it ha huh? what he says yes, yes. oh you know it <laughs> then how can you test it yes wants to drink this nectar through years yes through years shruti gatang shruti means here ah if you can drink this nectar through your years that means paying concentrated attention hear it very carefully then all your body all your consciousness your heart will be purified will be purified of all material contaminations then you will be able to see the lord then stand then you will be able to see the lord shrute khi to pathang shrute khi to pathang shruta and ikhi to if you can hear then you can see ikhi to means see a story i was telling you such big big personalities leaders here in this material world they say is there god is there lord has anybody seen him i am such a great leader i have not seen has anybody seen it they say because they can't see i was telling how the great demon hiranya kashipu could see whereas his son seven year old son prahlad maharaj could see then said why why hiranya kashipu could see and and why and how prahlad could see ha what is who can answer yes ni mai Narad Muni. He is the Bhagavatam from Narad Muni. Yes. Prahlad Maharaj had heard this Bhagavatam. He has heard. So he could see. Shrute ki ta patham. If you can hear this Srimad Bhagavatam Krishna Katha from a bona fide personality, authority, then you will be able to see the Lord. Who will never hear, who has never heard, he cannot see. He cannot see. This is the process. This is the process, and Lord Shiva is very, very merciful also, very, very merciful, and very magnanimous. Dar is very magnanimous. He always accepts all the rejected stuff, all rejected stuff. Nobody will accept that thing, and thereby he saves. Lord Shiva has no place. You see, he lives. Uh, in a crematorium ground you see small son he is uh, almost naked almost naked huh eh? and he has put on the snakes also in his body snake garland snake in hand snake in this uh, hip all snakes then stand he has smear the ashes throughout the body Throughout the body, he has smeared the ashes. He is a mad person. He is also a mad person. He dances always. He dances. Do you understand? He dances and he also sings or dances. And he has a bull. His carrier bull is there. Hmm. He has a trident with him. Trishul trident. Trident. Do you understand? Yeah, such a personality. Externally, one may see if one may see Lord Shiva. Shiva will not appreciate him. Was such an ugly person, almost naked with snakes, huh? With matted hair. 
is wearing ashes. Not good looking person. He's not good looking person. Uh, a madman. But he's a merciful person. And such magnanimous heart he is and very, very powerful personality also. Then otherwise, how can one devour all such ocean like poison? If you can take only a drop of that poison, you'll die. But he didn't die. He didn't die. And no harm also took place in him. No harm. Yes, so, such power is such a powerful personality. Thereby he saves the whole universe. Do you understand? Only little, little drops, some that is, that fell down on the ground, little drops of poison, the scorpions, the snakes, they took it. So they have become very poisonous. The scorpions and snakes. Very little drop. While Sivaji was drinking that poison, some little drops fell down. And the scorpions and snakes, they took it. So they have become so poisonous now. If a snake will bite, you will die. Do you understand? It is very poisonous. How? Lord Shiva could digest all these things. He has such wonderful power. Here one question is here. The Prajapatis um, are offering prayers to Lord Shiva. Oh Lord, you are the cause of bondage and liberation of the entire universe because you are its ruler. Those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness surrender unto you. And therefore, you are the cause of mitigating their distresses. And you are also the cause of their liberation. We therefore worship your worship. And my revered spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada, in his purpose explained it. Actually, Lord Vishnu maintains and accomplishes all good fortune. If one has to take shelter of Lord Vishnu, why should the demigods take shelter of the Lord? Why should he take shelter of demigods like Lord? No need at all. In Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has said, no, no need at all to take shelter of a demigod. Janne, huh? what is that? Uh, no, one, if someone avoiding or disregarding Lord Vishnu or Krishna takes shelter of a demigod or some demigods, he is an unintelligent person. Unintelligent. He has no intelligence at all. Krishna says that thing in the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. He has no intelligence at all. He is very... Because the demigods are subordinate to Krishna, the supreme personality of God. Krishna, Vishnu. Haristeka tattam vidhisiva suresa pranamitam. Lord Hari is the supreme truth. Neither Lord Shiva, nor Brahma, nor Indra. They are all subordinate to Lord Vishnu or Krishna. Vidhi Shiva Suresha Pranamitam. Lord Shiva is worshipped by Lord Brahma, by Lord Shiva and Lord Indra also, all demigods. Ekali Ishwara Krishna also Vrutya. Krishna is the only Ishwara. Only supreme controller, Vibhu, supreme Lord, all others are his servitors. Then this question arises here. Why should? Why should one uh, demigod like Shiva take shelter? Why? What necessity? No necessity at all. But here in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said the Prajapatis of her prayer. To Lord Shiva, that you are the cause of bondage and liberation of the entire universe because you are its ruler. You are the cause of mitigating the distresses of those persons who surrender unto you. You are also the cause of their liberation. We therefore receive your worship. If also it is said, 
जथा तरण मूल निशचने तृप्यंति तत्स्कंद भुजब शाखा प्राणापहरार्थ तथींद्रिया तथी सर्वारण मच्युति वाटर इफ यू पुट वाटर एट दी रूट ऑफ ए ट्री देन होल ट्री विद इट्स ब्रांचेस ट्वीस फ्रूट्स एंड लिप्स विल गेट वाटर नो सिपरेट वाटर इफ यू गिव फूड टू दिस स्टोमैक देन होल बॉडी विल बी नरिस्ट नो नेसेसिटी ऑफ गिविंग फूड टू द आई और ईयर और नोज और हांड और ले Similarly, the third one is Chuta Jya. If you only worship Lord Vishnu, Chuta, or Lord Narayana, or Krishna, automatically all are worshipped. All the demigods are worshipped. No necessity at all to worship the demigods. You understand? No necessity. Lord Vishnu, or Lord Krishna, is the supreme Lord, all powerful. He is unlimited. He is ananta. He has unlimited potency. Whereas these demigods have limited potency. Demigods have limited potency. They will give you some limited result, limited benediction. They cannot give you unlimited benediction. No, because they have limited power. Limited power. So, why shall one worship demigod like Sir Shiva? And why the Prajapati say so? This is most important thing. This is very confusing. This is very confusing. Simad Bhagavatam says, only worship Krishna. Only worship Lord Vishnu, then automatically all the demigods will be worshipped. All will be worshipped if Krishna will be satisfied or Vishnu will be satisfied. Automatically, all will be satisfied. All will be satisfied. As I say, as Simad Bhagavatam says, if you give food to the stomach, then automatically all the limbs of your body will be satisfied and nourished. No separate giving. Then why this question arises? This is most important question. Therefore, we have this thing. I was telling that thing last evening. It's not easy thing. It's not easy thing to understand this thing. It's very very difficult thing. So Krishna says in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यं एवं जो वेति तत्व त्यक्त देहम पुनर्जन्म नएति सी अर्जुन दिस मोस्ट जो वेति तत्व कृष्ण से माय अपियरेन्स और बर्थ एंड एक्टिविटीज लीलास आर ऑल ट्रांसेंडेंटल इट इज नॉट मेटीरियल एंड इफ सम नॉज इन इट इन तत्व जो बेति तत्व तो नोज इन तत्व देन दैट लाइफ विल बी हिज लास्ट लाइफ हियर इन दिस मेटेरियल वर्ल्ड एफ्टर दिस लाइफ वेन दिस बॉडी विल बी फिनिश्ड देन ही विल गो टू मी देर इज नो डाउट इन इट डू अंडरस्टैंड दिस मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट जो बेथी तत्व तो वन शुड अंडरस्टैंड इट इन तत्व We have two considerations. Two considerations. Do you know what are two considerations? You? What's your name? Huh? What's it? Grand. 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 It's a new bhakt also. Ah, cha 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 cha. Let there be some stamp. I can I can recognize it. It's a new bhakt. You president make a stamp. It's a new bhakt. <laughs> <laughs> I am in confusion. <laughs> All right, you bhakta, gram. Gram. All right, whatever you want, you bhakta. That's all right. <laughs> There are two considerations. Do you know those two considerations? You don't know new one. You know. 
uh, you are not new, I think. You are old. <laughs> you don't know. Yes. It's not expected that all should know uh, everything. Yes, that's all right. You know, Parameshwar? Huh? You are rascal. <laughs> achha, achha. There are two considerations. One is apat vichar, another is tat vichar. In English we say apparent consideration and tat vichar, absolute consideration. Do you understand? Now you understand it. You new bhakta, all the new bhaktas, you should understand. We have two considerations. Abad vichar, tat vichar. Apparent consideration and absolute consideration. Do you understand? And our case, our consideration is tattva vichar, not apparent. Not apparent. No. It's tattva vichar. Jo veti tattva Krishna says. Tattva. One should understand Krishna in tattva. In tattva. One should understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Because it's not different from Krishna. Krishna Tulya Bhagavata. First I said you. So should be understood in Tata. Tatamang Tatato Gyantva Bisati Tadanantaram. Eh, Krishna says this thing in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Tatamang Tatato Gyantva Bisati Tadanantaram. You want to go? To the kingdom of Krishna? You want? Yes. How can you go? I came here to Australia. First I have to be granted visa. <laughs> yeah. And first I will obtain a passport. Then I will apply for visa. The Australian High Commission will grant it. Then uh, one will be able to enter into Australia, otherwise, no, refuse. Ah! So, your passport and visa granted. No, get out! How do I answer? Get out! Or, if you enter, then you will be punished. Do you understand? No, Allah. They will not allow you. This is the case here in material world. And how can you enter into the spiritual world? What passport do you have? What visa you have been granted? Huh? How can you enter? Do you know what passport is required? What visa? Is there any high commission will grant you visa to enter into the spiritual world? Do you know it? Huh? You don't know. You don't know. This is passport and visa. Jobeti tattotaha. Tattoto gyantva visote tadanandaram. If someone can understand me in tattva, in absolute consideration, that is visa granted. Then he will be able to enter into my kingdom. Otherwise, no. Get out here. Do you understand? So this is tattva vichar. This is absolute consideration, no apparent consideration. This is very, very subtle tattva is here. Very subtle tattva. Let me give you one example. What is tattva vichar? I think most of you cannot understand it. Most of you cannot understand it. Can you understand? What is tattva vichar? You economic student, you cannot understand. Do you understand? No. That's what I say. That I say. It's not an easy thing. So let me give you one example. Say, the Krishna, its the activity of Krishna is a very wonderful activity, it's transcendental, not material activities. I'll tell you one story from Sri Mahabharata. Do you know Yudhishthira Maharaj, the eldest brother of five Pandavas? Eh? There, are, there are five Pandavas. Yudhishthira, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul, Sade. Yudhishthira is the eldest brother. Eh? Famous one. So when that uh, Pandavas were banished, they were living in the forest. 
Do you understand? With their wife Draupadi, they are living there. And once Draupadi felt very thirsty, she needed water. Mm, please give me some water. I am very thirsty. So near, in the near distance, there is a very good tank with very clear water. Mm. So one by one, all the brothers, uh, Nakul went, Sahadev went, uh, and uh, in this Bhim went or June went to get water. But they couldn't get water. There was a dharma baka there. Uh, he was asking some questions. He said, if first answer my question, then you can get the water. Otherwise, you cannot get the water. If you take, you will all die. They, all, they are all dead. They couldn't answer the question what the dharma baka puts. At last, Yudhishthir went there. You understand? At last, Yudhishthir went there. So Dharma Bhaka said, you see, all your brothers are lying dead there. They couldn't answer my question. If you can answer my question, then you can be able to take the water, otherwise not. Then Yudhishthira Maharaj said, all right, what is your question? Dharma Bhaka asked him four questions. Four questions. Kimasarjyam kahasuki khapanthaha kachavartika. Badame chatura prasnan murta jivantu sodaraha. This is Sri Sri Mahabharata. You understand? It's four questions. What is wonderful here in this material world? This first question. Kashukhi, who is happy here? The second question. Kapantha, what is the way? It's third question. Fourth, Kachavartika, what is the message here? These are four questions. Do you understand? Economic student. Huh? These four questions were asked by Dharma Bhaka. I am not going to tell you the all answers. I have only given one answer. Kaushukhihi. Who is happy here? Do you understand? It's one of the questions, one of the four questions. Kasuki, who is happy here? And Judith Maharaj gave answer, very nice answer. Panchami ahani sastheva sakum pachati so gruhe. Anruni apravasi cha so bari cha ramodate. This answer Judith Maharaj gave. You can't understand what he says. Do you understand? Let me tell you. Who is Sukhi? He says, Pancha me ahani sastheva sakum pachati so gruhe. That person, one who works very hard, whole day he works, and retiring from work, he comes to his home at the last part of the day and cooks some sak. Sak, leafy vegetable. Do you understand? You are cooking sak here also. Huh? Leafy vegetable. He cooks some sack. Huh? And just eats it. Do you understand? He's sukhi, he says. Then another thing he says, Anruni. He has never incurred any debt. Do you understand? Anruni. He just maintains himself by his own meager income. He never incurs any debt. It's unruni. Then, third thing he says, a pravasi. That means, who doesn't live in a foreign country, who lives in his own country, own house. Say, yes, yes, yes. Apparently, you understood as if, but it has a very deep meaning, very deep meaning. Very deep meaning. I will raise a question. Yudhishthir Maharaj says, who has never incurred any debt, who lives in his own country, own house, village, not, not, doesn't live in a foreign country, and toils hard, 
and just cooks sock and eats so is very happy but judishtha maharaj has not said or oge all right if some person has all these things but if he is a diseased person he has some disease will he be happy will he be happy ha huh? no will he be happy what to say new bhakta ha huh? if you are a diseased person is some colic pain some difficulty in the stomach like jagatpati oh <laughs> so <laughs> how will one will be happy you see this maharaj didn't say or oge he has never said this thing will be free from disease no disease at all then he will be happy he has never said so i think this maharaj answer is not complete do you think is it complete is complete yeah because you cannot understand it in tatva therefore i said you understand it in apparent you have apparent consideration you don't know what is tatva vichar here but judish maharaj answer is quite complete it's not incomplete at all is not incomplete at all how is it complete he has not said or oge is no disease this is what what to, how to understand in tattva therefore i say we have these two considerations apparent consideration and absolute consideration tattva vichar is apparently all understand it apparently nobody very very few persons very those who know the truth they can understand otherwise not possible do you understand let me say who is anruni here is there anybody anruni is there anybody who has not incurred any debt have you incurred any debt ha huh? no you are telling lies You have been got debt. Nobody is there who is on Rooney here. You will never find one body here who has not been got debt. All are, all have been been got debts. Do you know what is that debt? You know it. What is that debt? Huh? Karma. What karma? You know all sins. what karma you are indebted to your father and mother pitru runa isn't it your father and mother gave you birth ha huh? do you understand they take care of you you grow up they maintain you isn't it ha huh? so are you not indebted to them have you no duty no obligation to them how will you pay back that debt how can you pay back that debt huh no then you are indebted you are indebted you have incurred debt how to say that i have not incurred any debt huh all are all have in debt in ka debt they have pitru runa dev runa rushi runa bhut runa you are indebted to your parents for fathers you are indebted to demigods you see lord shiva saves you taking poison isn't it are you not indebted to him ha huh? then You are indebted to the demigods, Devruna, Pitruna, Devruna, Rusiruna. The sages, the saints, do you understand? You are indebted to them, isn't it? Devruna, Pitru, Rusiruna, Bhutaruna. You are indebted to the other animals also, isn't it? Cow gives you milk, the bull plows land, isn't it? Ah, huh? so many. 
animals. Are you not indebted to them? Huh? Then how will you pay back the debt? How can you pay back the debt? You are all indebted. We are all indebted. Do you understand? But how can we pay back? This question. This is the question. Do you know any means? How can you pay back? Have you any means? No. Once Krishna has also said, "Is Krishna indebted to anybody? Huh? Is Krishna indebted? Huh? Yes. To whom? To devotees. How is it? How is it? How Krishna is indebted to devotees? Huh? Once Krishna said, "It is in tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam." You understand? He told the gopis. He told the gopis. Oh, gopis! You have developed so intense and pure love towards me that you are running to me at midnight, leaving aside your husbands, your family, your children. At dead of night, you are running to me to the jungle of Brindavan. You have developed so much intense and pure love towards me. I have no wealth to pay it back. I am indebted to you. Do you understand what I say, new bhakta? You can't understand. I think <laughs> is new bhakta. You understood? Huh? What's your name? Huh? He's also new bhakta. <laughs> Is also new bhakta. <laughs> all right, all right. You see, Krishna says this thing. He is indebted to the gopis. He is all powerful. He is completely full. Who has all wealth with him? Lakshmi, Sata, Sastra, Samrama, Sevyamanam. Thousands and thousands of Lakshmis are serving him. And he says, "I have no wealth to pay back your debt. I have no wealth. How it is? Do you understand? This is very difficult. This is what I said to understand in tattva, is tattva bichar, not apparent. This is how to pay back your love towards me. No material wealth is required for it. That." Wealth I am lacking, Krishna says. Do you understand? Therefore, he came as Gauranga Mahaprabhu to pay back that debt. Do you understand me? He became indebted when he is Krishna. Krishna is never indebted to anybody. You see, all we are indebted to him. How Krishna will be indebted to us? No, no, no. But Krishna says to Gopis, "I am indebted to you because I have no wealth to pay back your this love." So he came as Gauranga Mahaprabhu to pay back that love. Do you understand? And the Gopis, headed by Radharani, do you understand? Feeling the pangs of Separation from Krishna, and crying and crying and crying. Oh, Krishna, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Do you understand? They are crying. They are wandering in the forest of Brindavan, asking every creature or every tree, every animal, "Have you seen Krishna? Have you seen Krishna? Oh, tree, oh, creeper, oh, bird, oh, deer." You see, you see, Goranga Mahaprabhu. The creatures are there, deer are there, cows are there, peacock is there, and Mahaprabhu is feeling that pangs of separation. You see there. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? They are crying and wondering. 
Similarly, Mahaprabhu was crying, was crying for Krishna. Though he is Krishna himself, is crying for Krishna. Gauranga bolite hobe puloko sorir. Do you know this? Gauranga bolite hobe puloko sorir. If you utter the name of Gauranga, your whole body will be filled with pleasure and all the hairs on the body will be erected. Do you understand? New Bhakta. Huh? Have you ever felt such sensation? No, no. If just what utter the name of Gauranga, your whole body will be so cheerful, will feel so pleasure. Oh, the all hairs on the body will be erected. Why? Why? Why such thing takes place? Do you know? You know? Why? Love. Hari Hari Bolita Noyonu Boye Niro. You should know this thing. Gauranga Bolita Hobe Puloko Sori. Hori Hori Bolita Noyonu Boye Niro. That's the answer given there. Do you know this song? This famous song? Is Vaishnava Mahajan song? Yes, consult your song book. You'll find there. Huh? Gauranga Balite Hove Pulaka Sariro. Hari Hari Balite No Yonu Vahe Niro. He is Lord Hari himself. But uttering Hari, he says, Dear Hari, Hari. You see. He is himself Hari, isn't it? But uttering the name of Hari, he says, Dear. Hari Hari Balite No Yonu Vahe Niro. This is the reason. How Hari himself is crying. <laughs> that means Gauranga Paul. Feeling the pangs of separation from Krishna. Kaha Krishna Nanda Kula Chandrama. Huh? When he sees Lord Gauranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees Surup Dandar Goswami, Raya Ramananda. Do you know? Surup Dandar Goswami and Raya Ramananda. They were Lalita Sakhi and Bisaka Sakhi in Krishna Lila. In Gauranga's Lila, they were Surabhadandar Goswami and Raya Ramananda. As Radharani was crying, saying Lalita Sakhi and Bisaka Sakhi, asking, Where is that Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj? Kaha gale, kaha paun? Sri Nanda Nanda no. Keho mote bheta ivo. You see? Kaha gale, kaha paun? Sri Nanda Nanda no. Where shall I go? Where shall I find him? That son of Nanda Maharaj. Can anybody help me in finding him? Keho mote bheta ivo. Sri Nanda Nanda no. Understand? Rasrimad Radhani was crying. Similarly, Mahaprabhu was crying. When saying Raya Ramananda and Surup Dandar Goswami, because they were Sakis. Ko Nanda Kula Chandrama. Ko Mandra Murali Rava. Ko Mahan Surendra Mani Dham, like that. You see, where is that son of Nanda Maharaj? Where is that Krishna who plays flute in such a sweet tone? Mandra Murali Rava. Do you understand? This Mahaprabhu was uttering this and crying and shedding tears. Hari Hari Valite Nayanu Nira. The Lord Hari himself and shedding tears by uttering the name of Hari. Thereby, he is paying back the debts. Do you understand? Thereby, Krishna is paying back the debts. Krishna has become indebted. You say you are not indebted? You have not incurred any debt? Runa? 
We are all indebted. We have been indebted to our poor fathers, to our parents, to our poor fathers, to demigods, to sadhus, saints, rishis, to other animals. How can we pay back? Have we any means? No. Only one means is there. You cannot pay back with anything else. Devarsi bhutapta nuram pitrunamba na kinkara nayam runicharajan sarvapane jo saranam saranyam gata mukundam parihurta kartan. Srimad Bhagavatam says, this is the how can one pay back that? Sarvapane jo saranam saranyam gata mukundam parihurta. If someone can completely surrender into that Lord Krishna, Lord Mukunda. Do you understand? Then he pays back all the debts, all the debts, all the debts to your forefather, debts to demigods, debts to rishis, saints, debts to other animals. All. Do you understand? Finished. No debt. Then you become indebted. Otherwise, you are not indebted. Do you understand? And just Maharaj said the same thing, Baba. Same thing. This is Tattva Vichar. This is Tattva Vichar. It's not a parent consideration, it's absolute consideration. That means when he is a pure devotee, has completely surrendered unto Lord Mukunda, Krishna or Hari, he is unruni. Do you understand? Whole day he toils hard for the service of Krishna. Whole day, whole day, toils hard. Gets out, gets out for the service of Krishna. Do you understand? Coming back in the evening, only taking little sak prasad. <laughs> he is happy. Do you understand? And Apravasi. You see, a Prabhasi, he is not in a foreign land, he is in his own home. Do you understand? All are in foreign land. I have come to a foreign land, apparently. Uh, he has come to a foreign land, apparently. Uh, he has come to a foreign land. Are you Australia? Huh? <laughs> oh, then you are in your own land. <laughs> are you suki? Happy? <laughs> we are all foreigners here, Baba. We are all foreigners. Our homeland is... What is that? My Guru Maharaj says, Go back home! You see? Isn't it? My Guru Maharaj emphatically says, Go back home! Do you understand? Ghar ko chalo! Go back home! Where is home? I am in home! You nonsense! You are in home! You are a foreigner here! <laughs> you are not in home! <laughs> Your home is there! Your father is there! It's a Lord's kingdom! Isn't it? Lord's kingdom! That is said here! Aham bija prada pita! Here, Srila Prabhupada quoted from Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Lord says in Bhagavad Gita uh, that He is the father of all living entities. Aham Bija Pada Pita. I am the self giving father. His father. Your father's home is there. You are here. Are you not in a foreign land? Huh? Yes. You are in. We are all foreigners here. All Prabhasi here, nobody of Prabhasi. How can one be happy? Do you understand? What Jyotish Maharaj says? One who is in king's kingdom with his father, his father's home, do you understand? He is not indebted to anybody, he has not incurred any debt. He tells her for the service of his father, Lord Krishna, whole day. And is very much satisfied with a little sock at the end of the day. And he is in his father's house. He is suki. He is happy. Do you understand? His, there is no disease there. Is that disease? Janma mrityu jara vyadhi. 
But death, old age, and disease are here in this material world. All are diseased persons, isn't it? Are you not diseased person? Huh? Yes, all are diseased. Ask one by one. All are diseased. I am a diseased person. Then stand. One who is there, there is no death, birth, old age, and disease. So why shall Dushti Maharaj said arogya? No need of saying. Do you understand? No need of saying. So he is happy. This is tattva vichar. Do you understand me now? You can't understand it fully. I think still some lacking in you. <laughs> so Dushti Maharaj gave a complete answer. Do you understand? His complete answer is complete. This is tattva vichar. It's not apparent, but apparently is defective. So our vichar is tattva vichar. Our consciousness is tattva. So this tattva is there. How is it? That question is raised here. Actual Lord Vishnu maintains an accomplice all good fortune. If one has to take shelter of Lord Vishnu, there is no need of taking shelter of any demigod. But why it is said? Why it is said? The Prajapati said this thing to Lord Shiva. Shila Prabhupada has explained it. Here, yeah. Lord Vishnu is always on a task to material activities. But when material activities are to be performed, Lord Vishnu performs them through Lord Shiva. Through Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is therefore received on the level of Lord Vishnu. When Lord Vishnu is on a task to external energy, he is Lord Vishnu. When he is in touch with external energy, appears in the feature of Lord Shiva. That Brahma Sangita says. That Brahma Sangita says about Lord Shiva. Khira jatha dadhivikara vishesh jogar sanjayate nahi tato prithagasti heto dasambhu samupeta karjat govindam adi purusam tamahum vachan. That Brahma Sangita says it the same thing. Lord Shiva is non different from Vishnu. Example, milk and jogrut. Example is given milk and jogrut. Kira the thad of the vikar of his is a jogat. You understand? Jogrut is formed out of milk. If you just put some acid, you understand, to it. Sour thing and lemon also, huh? lemon juice. The jogrut is prepared. So jogrut is not different from milk. Similarly, Lord Shiva is not different from Lord Vishnu. But jogrut can be turned into milk. No. No. Jogrut cannot be turned into milk. And Jogrut cannot be said as milk. No. Do you understand? Dugdha hoite nare. It is said. Dugdha hoite nare. It cannot be turned into milk. It cannot be said as milk. Dugdhantara vastu noy dugdha hoite nare. It's not different from milk. But it cannot be served milk, it cannot be turned into milk, because something is added to it. That is a seed. Do you understand? But milk, there is no addition at all. Similarly, this is the difference between Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. That is stated here by Srila Prabhupada. This is the difference between Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. Lord Vishnu is an attached to material energy or external energy. It's not attached. Whereas Shiva is attached. Do you understand? Whereas Shiva is attached to external energy. Lord Vishnu is not attached. This is the difference between Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. And Shiva is very, Lord Shiva is very, very powerful personality. Very, very powerful personality. It's more powerful than Lord. 
Brahma also. He is more powerful than Brahma. Therefore, Lord Shiva is worshipped. Lord Shiva is worshipped. Lord Shiva gives all material things, material opulence, material name, fame, prestige, everything Lord Shiva gives. <coughs> everything he gives. Yesterday evening I told you how that poor Brahmin worshipped Lord Shiva at Kasi. Eh? Her wealth and Lord Shiva gave benediction. Go to Sanatana Goswami, he has wealth, he will give you. Therefore, he got that wonderful touchstone. It's very wonderful. If you can touch a piece of iron, or that touchstone, that piece of iron will be turned into gold. But by the association of Sri Sanatana Goswami, he got something extraordinarily, very, very, uh, that wealth, uh, valuable wealth. That is Nam Prem. Who could do? kick off that wonderful touchstone? That by the mercy of Lord Shiva, that Brahmin could get it. This is the mercy of Lord Shiva. You understand? This is the mercy of Lord Shiva. Vaishnavanangatha Sambhu. Sambhu. Lord Shiva is also a Vaishnav. I was telling Lord Shiva. Was, is dancing like a madman. You understand? And singing also. That's known as Tandava Nurtya. Eh? Nirantara Kahe Shiva Mui Krishna Das. What he says? All he says, I am a servant of Krishna. Nirantara Kahe Shiva Mui Krishna Das. I am a servant of Krishna. He's just singing this thing and dancing. And so ecstatic in that bhav. is so powerful that he is able to drink the whole ocean-like poison. Whole ocean-like poison. Thereby, he is so powerful. Do you understand? If someone will be as powerful as Lord Shiva, then he can also drink. But nobody is prepared to drink. Why shall we drink a poison? We must have nectar. We don't want poison. Do you understand? But Lord Shiva is so magnanimous. He always accepts all the rejected stuff. He is known as Bhutanatho. All the ghosts are with him. Bhutanatho. He lives in a crematorium ground. No house at all. No living place at all. Eh? All the animals are with him. All the ghosts are with him. Nobody wants. Hmm? All the demons, all the jakshas, all the rakshasas, they are all with Krishna, with this uh, Shiva. Nobody wants to take them. They are all rejected. Lord Shiva, all right, come to me, come to me, come to me. I'll give you shelter. So they are all there. Because he accepts all rejected stuff. All rejected stuff. Yes, Lord Shiva is so merciful, so magnanimous, very, very powerful. Even more powerful than Lord Brahma. He said, Sambhu, Rudra, is born out of Brahma, but is more powerful than Brahma. Srila Rupa Goswami hmm, has mentioned in Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu, there are 64 qualities in Lord Krishna. Do you understand? 64 qualities. Out of 64 qualities, some 50 qualities in minute form are in every living entity. They understand. But uh, in Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Indra, like demigods, they possess 55 qualities. Possess 55 qualities. Five qualities more than ordinary living entity. Do you understand? The 50 qualities 
those are in very minute form quantity in every living entity those qualities are in some greater degree they are in lord shiva lord brahma lord indra etc and more five qualities are there then stand the demigods they possess fifty five qualities all other vishnu tattvas lord vishnu lord narayan narsingha vamana you understand many vishnu tattvas are there krishna is the only avatari sarvanshi sarvata sarvavatari krishna is the source of all incarnation he is bhagavan dal vishnu tattvas they possess sixty qualities Sixty qualities, fifty-five plus five, sixty qualities. But Lord Krishna has sixty-four qualities. So Krishna is the Bhagavan, so young Krishna is the Bhagavan. These four qualities there are four Madhuriyas: Rupa Madhuri, Lila Madhuri, Venu Madhuri, Rati Madhuri. These four Madhuriyas. are only with krishna not with any incarnation therefore krishna is bhagavan so demigods they possess 55 qualities brahma possesses 55 qualities lord shiva also possesses 55 qualities but the qualities in shiva is something more than with brahma then with brahma the same fifty-five part is something more more in degree not in something more in number do you understand me in more in degree and lord shiva has more controlling capacity than lord brahma lord shiva has more controlling capacity than brahma therefore lord shiva is worshiped Vaishnava also worship Lord Shiva because he is the Vaishnava. Vaishnava is not a thousand. Gopis in Brindavan worship Gopeshwar. Lord Shiva, you can find that Gopeshwar temple in Brindavan. Lord Shiva temple is there. It is known as Gopeshwar. Jai Jai Gopeshwar Brindavan Amazo. That's in song you'll find. जय जय गोपेश्वर वृंदावन माधो लॉर्ड गोपेश्वर लॉर्ड शिव बिग गोरीफाइड इज इन वृंदावन एंड गोपीज आर आल्सो वर्शिपिंग दैट शिव व्हाई व्हाई वि शिव इज सच अ वेरी पावरफुल वैष्णव मर्सीफुल वैष्णव इफ वी कैन गेट हिज मर्सी देन कैन वी कैन हैव कृष्णा आवर हस्बैंड कृष्णा आवर हस्बैंड they are worshiping lord shiva and asking for this benediction o oh lord shiva please shower your benediction upon us let us have our beloved krishna and so by the mercy of lord shiva they get so vaishnavas also worship lord shiva and we have this only prayer o oh lord shiva bestow your mercy and benediction upon us that will develop krishna bhakti will get krishna this is only purpose of worshiping krishna lord shiva don't worship lord shiva like demons to get material wealth name fame and prestige no the demons worship lord shiva also to get material wealth name fame prestige and lord shiva awards them yes awards them Lord Shiva also awards them, and sometimes he is put into trouble also by awarding such the benediction to the demons. Lord Shiva is also put into trouble. One Brukasura was there who worshipped Lord Shiva. Asutosha, very quickly, immediately satisfied, huh? And asked, "All right, what do you want?" Brukasura said, "Please give me such benediction. If I toss the head of some person, he will be burnt to ashes. Finished. Give me this benediction. 
लॉर्ड शिव यू सी इमीडिएटली ग्रांटेड तथास्तु 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 यू गेट इट इमीडिएटली ग्रांटेड सो दट डीमन वॉन्टेड टू टेस्ट इट शिव लुक लाइक ए मैड मैन वॉट इज से इज इट ट्रू He couldn't have believed in it. He didn't believe. So demons are really uh, such people, such type of people. They never believe. Mm, you understand? So, so he wanted to test it. So he ran after Shiva to put his hand on the head of Shiva and finish him. He ran after Shiva. As Shiva ji was put into trouble. Shiva ji was running, but what Shiva said that must come true. It's not false. It must come true. Shiva ji was running, and the demon was chasing him. You see, so Shiva ji at last went to Lord Narayan for protection. Lord Narayan could understand how Shiva ji was in trouble by giving benediction to a demon. <laughs> so Lord Narayan came out. As a brahmachari, young brahmachari, ah, and asked that demon, "Oh, why are you running? Why are you running after Shiva ji? Oh, he has given me this benediction. I want to test it, to put my hand on his head. Oh, you nonsense rascal! Why are you running after Lord Shiva? So long way, breathlessly running, <laughs> like that. Such a rascal, foolish person." A Lord Shiva, you see, a madman, mad person. Uh, do you believe in the words of a mad person? Why running? Why don't you put your hand on your own head and test it? <laughs> you made a trick. <laughs> so that demon put his own hand on his head, finished. <laughs> <laughs> so Lord Shiva is now saved. The Lord Shiva is such a personality. He didn't think of why this demon is asking for this benediction. He didn't think of, and why he asked such benediction. He didn't think of because he is in such ecstasy, in bhav, Krishna bhav, in such ecstasy, ecstasy. And the demons are there. He has allowed the demons to stay with him, so they are all disturbing. So Lord Shiva wants to dispose of them very quickly, very quickly. Johnson very quickly he wants. All right, what do you want? This. All right, all right. Get go, get out, get out. So, this is Lord Shiva. Very quickly he wants to dispose of them. <laughs> I, he cannot think of what he asks and what will be its uh, result. You see, he such is Lord Shiva, such magnanimous heart. If we can get the mercy of Lord Shiva, then we. Can develop Krishna bhakti. Hmm. Many things are the Shiva Tattva is. I am getting late. I'll finish soon. Shiva Tattva is something special Tattva. A special Tattva is not Jiva Tattva at all. No, not Jiva Tattva. The Shiva Tattva is some special Tattva, Swadantra Tattva. You understand, and in many places in scripture, this Vedic scripture will find the name of demigods. You understand, in the name of Vishnu, you'll find the name of demigods also. Same name, Shiva, this uh, Brahma, uh, and uh, Indra, like all these names you'll find in the name of Vishnu. So there is confusion. What is this? Name of Vishnu, with the Shiva's name is there, the Ma's name is there, Indra's name is there. Is name of Vishnu and the demigod name? There's some confusion. Why is it so? It's very confusing. Therefore, I said it should be understood in Tattva, not apparently. There is no apparent consideration. It's Tattva vichar, absolute consideration. What is that? The acharyas have answered this question because, as my beloved spiritual master says in his purport, "Aham bija pravapita," I am the seed-giving father. 
The father expands himself. Isn't it? The son is an expansion of power. Do you understand me? So, he has given his own names to the demigods. His own names. Do you understand? So, this is Tattva. Otherwise, one will be confused. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.